Greetings in the name of our wonderful Lord. This is Tony Broom Ministries, bringing to you the old-time preaching from God's Holy Word. Here's a sermon entitled, Having Confidence in God. There was a man who was walking a tightrope. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody do that or heard about people walking a tightrope. It's an art, something that it really takes a lot of skill to do. So they were cheering him on. Go, go. We know you can do it. We know you can do it. So he got across the tightrope. He came back. And he said, how many believe that I can take a wheelbarrow and ride it across that tightrope? They said, oh, yes. We know you can do it. We know you can do it. And this one little guy was jumping up and down and said, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. He said, get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> It's a little bit different when you have to ride in the wheelbarrow. I know that he can do it. But I don't think I want to do it. Well, the guy didn't have as much confidence when he had to get in there as he had to see the champion do it. Confidence. A lot of people lack confidence. But we need confidence in God. Having confidence in God. Psalm 65 verse 5 says... By terrible things in righteousness. That word terrible is the King James word. It means awesome. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. That's one place that song came from. He's an awesome God. He's awesome. Terrible in our language means bad, but by terrible things, by awesome things in righteousness, wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation? who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off upon the sea. Confidence in God has broad spectrum and can include all. Anybody can have confidence in God. And all are invited to have confidence in God. If you put confidence in the government, you're going to be disappointed. If you put confidence in things in this world, they will fail you. If you put confidence in a friend, They'll stick by you, but sometimes they come short because all of us are human. But if you put confidence in God, you will not be disappointed. Amen. We can have confidence that God will do what He said He will do, and He will always be faithful. Confidence. He is the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of those that are far off upon the sea. It includes all. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. That zeroes in on all the things that are going on right now. The desolation of the wicked. The desperation and all the things that are going on around us right now. That is what this verse is speaking to. You. You're talking about putting the Bible in today's newspaper headlines. That's it. Be not afraid of sudden fear and these things that are coming suddenly that you do not expect it. The Old Testament describes it as like a net that swoops down on a bunch of fish and catches them. That's the way it is. When sudden fear comes, don't be afraid. Neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Glory be to God. Confidence gives reason not to be afraid because it contains promise. Confidence has promise. It doesn't say, trust me just because, just because, just because. It says, trust me because there is a promise. I have a promise for those who trust in me. And the promise is, if you have confidence in the Lord, He will keep your foot from being taken. You will not be caught in the trap and the snare of the wicked one. He will cause you to rise up above your enemies. He will cause you to be free from the snare of the trapper and the devil. He will cause you to be free and your foot will not be taken. Confidence in God has a promise behind it. Proverbs 14, 26 and 27. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and His children shall have a place of refuge. We can get up under His feathers and we can scrooge up to Him on His wings shalt thou trust. We can be in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We don't have to worry about this desolation because we fear God. 
It's a blessing to fear God. I'm not talking about being scared of God. I'm talking about having a relationship with the Almighty Creator that you fear Him and you reverence Him and you respect Him. The fear of the Lord gives strong confidence and His children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is not a bad thing. Rather, it gives confidence. The fear of the Lord is our strong confidence. It's like a tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Lord, have mercy. The righteous run into it and are saved. We can run to that high tower today. We can run to that place of refuge. We can run to that strong tower. And we don't have to be afraid because our God is on our side. Amen. Proverbs 25, 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. That's confidence. Sometimes it's placed in the wrong thing or the wrong person. You try to trust someone and they are untrustworthy. They're not trustworthy. You try to put confidence in them and you cannot trust them around the corner. And that's what he's saying here. Confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth or a foot which is out of joint. Because confidence sometimes is placed in the wrong thing or the wrong person. We see that nationally. We see that in our government. You put confidence in someone and they turn around and they bite you. They turn around and they hurt you. Isaiah 30 verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength and you would not. The right kind of confidence is so different and opposite from this world. Instead of chaos, confusion, Despair, desolation, destruction, devastation, fear, fighting, supposed to be fussing. I think come out fusing. Look there on your paper. Fusing. Should have been fussing. Fusing. I said, Lord, what did I do that for? I missed that. He said, sometimes people have a short fuse. I'm going to get my fuse. Fusing. Well, that comes too. Fusing, fussing, feuding, hates, wars, wrath. And our confidence in God is in things like returning and rest. That's so much more peaceful than all this other stuff. Quietness and confidence. And that leads to salvation. We can have confidence in returning and in rest shall you be saved. In quietness will be your confidence. But you would not. When God offers a deal that you cannot refuse... The old Southern Gospel song said he offered me a deal that I could not refuse. When God offers you a deal like that, you do not turn it down. When you find something good in this world, they say free. Everything's free. You have a free test kit. They don't even need it, but they get it anyway because it's free. Free hockey putts. I'm going to give some of them away to see if you want some of them. Free. Free wood chips. It don't matter what it is. What about a cardboard cookie? We give one of them, that's free. What about a wooden nickel? Don't take any wooden nickels, they're free. We'll give you one. Some people like anything just because it's free. Well, why don't they like eternal life? That's the real thing that's free. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. When you offer them eternal life, they say, no, I don't want that. Well, that's what the prophets say right here. He said, in returning and quietness will be your confidence, you'll be saved. No, they said they won't do that. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 26. They shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Israel has discarded their confidence by rejecting Christ their Messiah. But God is their confidence. Because He still has a plan and purpose for them. They rejected Him, but He still loves them. He still has a plan and a purpose for them. You still do not go against them. You can try to take hostages in the synagogue, but you're going to pay the price. You do not do God's people wrong and get by with it. I'm telling you. God said, I still have a plan 
and I still have a purpose for them. They will dwell safely, and I will raise them up. God is their salvation. God is their Savior. Acts chapter 28, verse 30 and 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Paul could face an awful death with confidence because he believed the gospel that he was preaching and the God whom he was serving. He believed what he said. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired or rented house. And he preached and he taught the word of God. No man forbidding him. Yes, he would die. But he couldn't die till God got through with him. That's why he stayed in this little house, this rented house, for two whole years. He held back the punishment, which was not due to him, by the way, but the sentence of the Nero, he held it back. And the emperor, he held it back. God held it back because God still had a work for him to do. You can trust in God. And God will keep you here as long as you need to be here. He will keep you here as long as you have a work to do. God will not fail you and He will not allow you, the evil, to take hold of you because He will keep His promise to you and He will keep you here as long as He has a work for you to do. You can have confidence in Him. Paul said that we have confidence in God that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We have been very confident of this one thing. We are confident, I say, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. But until that happens, God will keep you here. He has a plan and purpose. And He was the confidence of Paul. God was His confidence. And He kept Him through. He preached and He taught the kingdom of God with all confidence. No man forbidding Him. When you got God on your side, nobody can be against you. Everybody might be against you, but it doesn't matter because God is for you. And if God is for us, who can be against us? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15. And in this confidence I was minded to come unto you before, that ye might have a second benefit. Confidence in God will give you more than a double dip blessing. It's like a double dip ice cream. Don't say that because these churches on this 21 day fast talking about ice cream and all that. Don't say that. Because ice cream, you scream, we might all scream for ice cream. Well, we get a double dip blessing. He said, I wanted to come to you. I had confidence to come to you because you can receive a second benefit. I'm glad I serve a God of a second benefit, third benefit, fourth benefit, on down the line. If you're a believer, you got the first benefit. You got it made in the shade. But you need a second benefit to get sanctified. Let the old man be killed. A third benefit, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Fourth benefit, get your divine healing. Fifth benefit, he'll take you to heaven one of these days. You got it made. Praise God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Confidence in God will help us love and trust each other. We don't have to say, I wonder if he's going to do me wrong or if she's going to do me wrong. He says here, I have confidence in the Lord touching you. And those who are against you, those who are otherwise minded, and he who troubles you will bear his judgment. It doesn't matter who he is. Confidence in God will help us love and trust each other. Ephesians 3 Verse 12, and this is a crackerjack verse right here. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. Wow! Hallelujah. Praise God. I think that deserves to be read again. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. Confidence in God gives both access and boldness so that we can freely approach Him by faith. Why can we come to Him? How can we come before God? Because we can have boldness. Why can we have boldness? How can we have boldness and not run away? Because we have access to God. 
This thing about accessibility. Some of us have faced all of our lifetime trying to make things accessible to us. And it's hard to have accessibility things that you can get access to printed material and to reading and to things that you have to do. Accessibility is always a barrier. But in God, there's no accessibility barrier. We have access to Him. We can have confidence and have boldness because we have access to come before Him in faith. Faith pleases God. Prayer unlocks the door to heaven. Faith is what unlocks the door. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Praise God for the faith. It pleases God. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And you come before Him in faith. You come before Him having boldness and access before God. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, the first part of verse 4. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. And Paul gives at least seven reasons why he could have had confidence in the flesh. He said, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, as having to do with the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. That's a whole lot of accolades to be put to your account. Not many people could boast of the achievements and glory and the accomplishments which Paul had acquired. But he threw it all away, all that false confidence, all that he threw away, he gave it up, he counted it all as loss for the cause of Christ. He even said, I count it as dung, though I may win Christ, and be found in Him not having my own righteousness, which is in the law, but the righteousness of God in Christ through faith. Amen. Yes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that you both do and will do the things which we commend you. Some people think, oh, they're not going to come. Oh, they're not going to do right. Oh, they're not going to make it. And all of our negative confessions, when it happens, we shouldn't be surprised because we confess so much negativity. Oh, they're not going to do right. Well, they're not going to do right. Oh, they're not going to make it. Well, they may not make it. But he said, I have confidence in you. I have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. Why don't we turn that cat around and say, I believe they can make it. I believe they can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. If God can use me, He can use anybody. God can save, Lord have mercy. If God can save me, He can save anybody. If God can do it for me, He can do it for you too. Let me tell you about my Jesus. If God can do it for me, He can do it for you. What He's done for me, He'll do for you. Glory, hallelujah. If my God did it for me, He can do it for you. Praise God. He said, let me tell you about my Jesus. We have confidence in you touching the Lord. And He said, I believe you do and will do the things that we command you. And He said to Philemon in verse 21, He said, having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. I don't believe you're just going to do enough to get by. I believe you're going to do more than I say. Confidence in God will keep us from second-guessing one another and will allow us to believe that there are really other people beside us who love God and will go to heaven. Some people think they're the only ones going. Well, if you're the only ones going, what made you so special to get in? If you can get in, I can get in. If I can get in, you can get in. If we can get in, others can get in. We're not the only ones going to heaven. There's no such thing as a Baptist bride or a Methodist bride or a Pentecostal bride. It's the bride of Jesus Christ. It includes all, everywhere, throughout all the regions of the world. Every nation, people, tribe, and tongue. We're all involved in this thing together. It's not like the thing on TV that says we're all in it together. No, I'm not in it with you, you old liberal thing, leading our nation to hell, plunging us into despair and desolation. No, I'm not in that with you. If you get in this thing with me and ride in the good old gospel ship, yeah, we're in this thing together. We're all in this thing together, but everybody ain't going the same way. 
Because some who talk about heaven ain't going there. But we are determined to make it. And if we make it, anybody can make it. Because we trust in God. We don't have to go around second guessing one another. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we fail sometimes. And we miss the mark sometimes. We all do. But that doesn't make us quit loving each other, quit liking each other. That doesn't make us quit having to do anything with each other. Because in Christ, yes we are. We're all in this thing together. Believe that there are other people who love God. There are other people who are going to make it. There are other people who want to do what's right. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. We have to hold fast. We can't just say, well, I'm saved 20 years ago. What about today? We have to stand true to God no matter what comes in these latter days in which we live. Verse 14 says, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Confidence in God is not just a one-time profession. It is an on-time, ever-enduring possession, which should be held on to firmly, surely, and steadfastly unto the end. He that endures to the end shall be saved. That doesn't mean that you have to wait to the end to claim salvation. We're saved now. But if we're saved now, that means it's going to be good in the end. He who endures to the end shall be saved. You can't say, well, I'm saved now. But I'm going to give up on God and I'm going to go out and start doing all these things again. And I'm not going to trust in God, but when I die, everything's going to be all right. You better have another thought coming. Because it's not going to be all right. If God is good enough and worth saving you, He's good enough and worth trusting until the end. We have to hold steadfast, sure, until the end. Hebrews 10.35 Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Confidence in God will most assuredly be rewarded. I'm trusting God. And I have confidence in God. And I should whether I get anything or not. But He will reward me. He will give us that reward. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. We don't want to, as the Spanish says, we don't want to run away from Him when He comes. When He comes, we don't have to be like a child who is ashamed of what they've done and they run away and hide behind the door. We don't want to be like that when Jesus comes. When He comes, we want to be ready. We want to be waiting and watching. Confidence in God will keep us from being afraid for Him to come back and ashamed before Him when He does. When He comes back, we want to be ready. We want to be hopping and skipping and jumping, as it were, and ready and waiting for Him to come again. And when you have confidence in God, you're eager for Him to come. You're not like your mom and daddy. When you did something bad and they were gone, you'd hope they stayed away two or three hours more. But they'd come back and find you in trouble. You knew you was going to get a hunk of hunk of beating when they got back. Because you knew you'd done, done something wrong. Well, that's the way it is. People don't have confidence in God. They claim a relationship with Christ, but they don't have confidence in God. They don't care if He comes back or not, because they do. When He does, they know when He does that they're going to be in trouble. But we don't have to be that way. We don't have to be ashamed or afraid before Him when He comes. We can have confidence in God and be glad when He comes. Chapter 3, verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. The Scripture said, if our heart is condemning us, God is greater than our heart and He knows all things. If your heart is condemning you and your conscience is bothering you, chances are that your confidence is waning and your confidence is lacking and therefore your heart is condemning you. You're second-guessing others and you're second-guessing, you're questioning your salvation. And the confidence is lacking. But when you have confidence in God, your heart does not condemn you. And if our heart does not condemn us, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You can have your prayers answered when you have confidence in God. But when your confidence is lacking and you don't have confidence in God, you don't know whether He hears you or not. You don't know whether He's going to answer your prayers or not. 
But if you have a relationship with God, if you can put your head in a man's lap, you got a relationship with God, you know everything's going to be all right. And no matter how it turns out, He will answer your prayers and He'll hear you when you call. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. This is what this confidence is. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Confidence proves that our heart is right with the Lord. Those who seldom see answer to their prayers can usually trace it back to a lack of confidence. If you're not seeing answers to your prayers, now what the enemy will tell you, see there, your prayers are not answered. That means you're sinning. You're a sinner. You're not right with God. That's not always true. It's not because of sin all the time. It's because of a lack of confidence. If we see that our prayers are not being answered, it can usually be traced back to a lack of confidence. Having confidence in God assures answered prayer. Answered prayer gives joy. Joy results in praise and worship, which in turn bolsters faith, which gives greater confidence. That produces more answered prayer. It's just a boomerang. keeps going around and rolling around for God. It results in the manifestation of miracles, signs, and wonders. We can have confidence in God. The reason that we see a slackness in salvations and conversions and miracles taking place, the reason that it doesn't happen like we want it to happen is because we don't have the confidence in God that the early church had. We don't have the confidence in God that the apostles had. The apostles could go down the street and the shadow of the body can pass by on somebody. They have confidence that something's going to happen when they get up from there and be raised up for the glory of God. They had confidence in the resurrected God. They had confidence in the power of His resurrection. They had confidence that when they said something, Jesus is going to back them up. And it's going to happen for the glory of God. They had confidence enough to say, Rise and walk in Jesus' name. They had confidence enough to say that when they went out and preached the gospel, somebody was going to hear it and be saved. The early fathers of the Pentecostal movement, they had confidence. When they prayed, they prayed till the answer came. And they prayed until Bonnie Street came into Azusa Street. And they prayed until the power of God shook the house. They prayed till people got up and started dancing. They prayed till the sick was healed. They prayed till the dead was raised. They prayed till the lost was saved. They prayed. And when we pray in the generation in which we're living, we don't think it's going to do any good because our confidence, that slack back. We need to have confidence in God. God will do what He said He's going to do. And He is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we will ask or think. Don't worry about your children because you have confidence in God. If God has taken care of you all your life, He can take care of them. There's a ladies and men right now that are in their graves because they have worried about their grandchildren. They're worried about their children. It has put them in an early grave because worry... As a sin, is a sin against God, and a sin against your soul, to worry yourself to death. And that's what it is. It worries you to death. That's what worry does. It will worry you to death. You worry about your children. You worry about your grandchildren. You worry about the church. You worry about the preacher. I don't know too much about that, but you worry about people in the world. Worry about the nation. Worry about the president. Worry about the government. Worry about everything. That ain't going to do nothing except a double negative. That's all to do. Won't do anybody any good. Worry. If a washing machine is broken, you can worry about that thing all day. You need to take a pair of pliers and a wrench. That'll help a whole lot more than a bunch of worry. We can worry ourselves into a fit. We can worry ourselves into disturbance. We can worry ourselves into depression. We can worry ourselves into the place where we don't even know where we have confidence in God or not. But if you put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee, you don't have to worry about it. God's going to help you. God's going to make it all right. God's going to bring it out. None of this has taught God by surprise. None of this virus, none of this pandemic, none of this has taught Him by surprise. He knows what's going on. He knows what's happening. 
He knows the beginning from the end. He knows the end from the beginning. Who cut up a supply? Praise God. He knows all about it. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Because the master of the winds, I done talked to him this morning, and he assures my heart that everything is going to be all right. Let's stand in the house and just praise and praise together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in this place today. We thank you, Lord, that we can bless your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. You are the confidence of the end of the earth. You are the confidence of those who are far off on the sea. You are the confidence of the church. You are the confidence of the pilgrim Christian. You are the confidence of those who are in despair. You are the confidence of us in this house. You are the confidence of the ministry. You are the confidence of the church. You are the confidence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We can be confident and confident to know that you are in control, that you're in charge. No matter what takes place, we can trust in you. We can trust you in the storm. We can trust you in the calm. We can trust you in the wind. We can trust you in the rain. We can trust you when things are good. We can trust you when things are not so good. We can trust you on the valley. We can trust you on the mountaintop. Wherever it is, we can trust in the living God. Praise you. Glorify you. Give praise and honor to Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name today. We pray the blessing of God upon our households. Pray the confidence would return. The confidence in the marriages. The confidence in the church house. Confidence in the relationships of brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that we would have confidence in God today. In Jesus' name. The church said, Amen. This has been a sermon from God's Word entitled, Having Confidence in God. You can rest assured and have confidence in Christ that He will save you today. Make Him your Lord. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.